It's not super often we hear about these big commercial applications coming to Linux. And I don't just mean a proprietary tool that you can use for free. I mean full on, you have to buy a license or you are not using this software. Now, don't get me wrong, there are certainly tools already like this available on Linux, but it's not something we really hear about in like our day-to-day -day endeavors in the desktop Linux space. And recently, the audio company Presonus decided to bring their Studio One door to Linux. A door, for anyone who doesn't know, is a digital audio workstation. I know the audio nerds are gonna explain exactly what a door is down below, but for the layman's, Think of it like a video editor, but for audio. Now, as much as I like making videos on things that nobody actually cares about, if this was the entire story, I wouldn't be making a video here. It'd probably just be a thing that I mention on my podcast. Let's take a look at the Linux Getting Started page. Considering the Linux release right now is just a beta, it starts with the expect the disclaimer. Please note that this is provided primarily for plugin developers and advanced Linux users. If you haven't successfully set up a Linux system, including a fully functional Jack audio server, please do so first, then read further. Now, at least from what's being said over on the forums, it seems like this is going to play perfectly fine with Pipewire Jack. Now, ignore the fact that this says no Pipewire Jack support. The first post in here is about how it works with Pipewire Jack. All modern Linux distributions already have Pipewire installed by default. If you use the true Jack connection kit, you'll have to change Pipewire to Pulse Audio to build bridges and comfortable use of the system. Pipewire and Pipewire Jack version 0.3.80 works great without latency. The first reply here is really confused because the title made it seem like it wasn't working, but the post said it was working, and other people in the thread were like, yeah, this also works just fine as well. That's not that important though. Let's go down to the system requirements. Ubuntu 23.04 with a Wayland session. Now, you might think it's weird that it's saying specifically Ubuntu. It's really common for proprietary applications coming over to Linux only being tested on a single distro and only shipping a package for a single distro. For example, DaVinci Resolve was shipped for CentOS, which has played out pretty well for them. That's not to say it only works in that distro. People have gotten DaVinci Resolve running on things like Ubuntu, on Arch, and all of these other distros. It's just, that's the only one they've tested on, and that's the only one they know it works on. In the case of Studio One, someone did go and get it running on Manjaro. It just involves grabbing some extra dependencies, installing some additional things, and hopefully dependencies don't change enough that it completely breaks. But why would you want to fiddle with all this stuff on Manjaro when nowadays we have DistroBox? Installation guide for distros other than Ubuntu 23.04. Install DistroBox. Make an Ubuntu 23.04 container. Go in the container. Install the package. Don't fiddle with all this other stuff. Just automate setting up Docker or Podman with DistroBox and use a container. But the part that really interested me was the with Wayland session. Let's go down to the Wayland section. Studio One is a Wayland application and won't run in an X11 session. Wayland is a display server protocol successor of the X window system. Ubuntu uses Wayland by default, but depending on the Ubuntu flavor you choose or your system configuration, you might currently run an X11 session. On the login screen, make sure to choose a Wayland session. If there is no Wayland session available, install the required packages for the Wayland compositor of your choice, e.g. Ubuntu Desktop or KDE Plasma Desktop. Basically, doesn't matter if you're using XSCE, stop doing that, install something that supports Wayland. You don't actually have to ditch your whole X11 session to run this application. If you don't know, you can actually embed a Wayland session on top of your X11 session. So if you want to run something like game scope, like Cage, or maybe something more like a full-on window manager, like Sway, like Hyperland, like River, all of those can be launched just like as a regular application. And inside of that, you can then launch Studio One. Probably Cage or game scope would give you the best experience, but nothing's really going to work super well except for a proper full-on Wayland session. 
but if for whatever reason the rest of your session desperately needs to be an X11, that will at least let you go and run it. Now, at this point, you're probably wondering where I'm actually going with this. I am one of those people that were kind of worried that companies wouldn't want to port their applications over to Wayland, or at least worried about the fact they might not want to make them play nicely through X Wayland. X has been the standard on Linux for its entire existence. Yeah, there was that weird time where Canonical tried to go and do that Mer thing, which Mer is now a Wayland compositor, but besides that, it's been X11 on the Linux side. Actually, it's been X11 for a really long time, just in Unix generally. I still think there's going to be a lot of challenge for existing applications, like Discord, for example, where their screen sharing is probably never going to work properly on Wayland. It works fine in Electron. The problem is Discord doesn't use the Electron system for interacting with the portals. It does its own thing, so it doesn't work. Slack, I know there's someone who watches this channel who was involved with Slack trying to get the problem fixed, so maybe that will happen. And to my surprise, Zoom actually did fix the problem. I guess all of that remote working money they got actually went to something good. And other apps may not be outright broken, they were just never tested on Wayland, and the developers just aren't dealing with any Wayland specific issues. But Think about trying to port a new application like Studio One to Linux. You're probably trying to target one of the major distros, like Ubuntu. If it's some like corporate software, probably RHEL. Maybe you want to target something like Fedora, maybe OpenSUSE. OpenSUSE is the odd one out because all of its desktops are in the one installer, but for the other three, GNOME and Wayland are the default. And without going and doing that, like, direct market research, trying to see exactly what the breakdown is like, it's generally safe to assume that most people are probably sticking with the defaults. Now, if your application is built with an established toolkit like Electron, like Qt, you'll naturally get both X11 and Wayland support. But a lot of these proprietary applications are built with these proprietary in-house toolkits. So you're not only porting the application, you're also porting the toolkit. And considering that Linux is probably not a major focus of the company, otherwise, you know, you wouldn't be talking about doing porting, you would have already done it, with the exception of apps that simply cannot work properly on Wayland due to deficiencies in the Wayland protocol, it seems like a logical conclusion that an app would only be developed with Wayland in mind. And ultimately, I don't know if this is a good thing or not. Maybe not this tool in particular, but I wouldn't be surprised if some killer app comes along, you know, equivalent to a Discord that everybody involved in a certain space wants to be using. If that comes along with Wayland-only support and sort of acts as a killer application that serves as a reason for people to want to go and try out this system. But, I also like the idea of users having choice. Yeah, I would like there to be more eyes on Wayland, looking at these problems, helping to get them solved. But, if someone has a certain edge case where they simply cannot use anything besides X11, I want those people to be able to use applications that are being made available. One neat thing I did notice on the Getting Started page is it seems like whoever wrote this actually has, you know, some level of understanding of how Wayland works, the issues that are available on Linux, and things like that. For example, there is some inclusion here about how to do debugging. Things to ensure that Vulkan is actually working. That's another thing. This does require a Vulkan-capable GPU. <laughs> so, this thing is going to be an absolute beast to run. Along with setting up things like professional audio and additional things you might need to do, along with linking you to things like the Arch Linux Wiki, like, whoever wrote this actually knows what they're doing. Going from the nonsense that I normally read, this is a really nice change of pace, and I appreciate whoever wrote this. So, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Yeah, we're not seeing a lot of apps being ported to Linux. Most of the stuff we see is homegrown in the Linux space, or open source software. When it comes to the proprietary side, 
nothing's going to change there. But of the apps that do get ported, do you think there is a higher chance that more of them are going to be Wayland only? Do you think my logic makes any level of sense, or do you think there is some other way that it can be looked at? I would love to know. So if you liked the video, go like the video. And if you really liked the video, and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scrabs, the Liberapay, linked in the description down below. That's going to be it for me, and I've got a set of Prasonna speakers.